Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 118, found at pages 5 and 6 of your bulletin. Let's read it responsively by half verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Let Israel now proclaim. The Lord is my strength and my song. There is a sound of exultation and victory. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live. The Lord has punished me sorely. Open for me the gates of righteousness. This is the gate of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me. The same stone which the builders rejected, this is the Lord's doing. On this day, the Lord has acted. A reading from the book of Acts. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! risen indeed. Alleluia. It feels so good to shout out that Easter acclamation, particularly after everything we've been through this past season of Lent. I mean, who could have possibly imagined that Ash Wednesday would be the last service in our beloved sacred space before the whole thing would burn to ashes. As a result, on that first Sunday in Lent, we found ourselves pushed out of our comfort zones as everyone rallied to make worship in this gym uh, not only happen, but happen with the dignity and the beauty that our prayer book liturgies and our Lord deserve. It's been a time of trial, unlike anything we've ever imagined. I'm so incredibly proud of how we've all worked together, church and school, to make everything work and to encourage and to support each other. Just think of all the extra lengths taken by the altar guild and the ushers, our hospitality crew and our choir, just to name a few. Really, y'all have been amazing, and I am so very grateful. I also want to thank the church office staff the school administrative staff and our teachers who have gone many extra miles to make things work. And to say that that hasn't been easy is quite an understatement. But they've handled challenges with patience, with grace, with professional integrity. I give thanks for the leadership of our vestry and school board. Both have borne witness to how deeply we love our church and our school and how committed we are to the ties that bind us together as partners in the ministries of education and Christian spiritual formation. And I especially want to give thanks today for the ministry of Mother Trish, our associate rector and school chaplain. Honestly, I don't know how I would be making it through all of this without your friendship and you as a colleague. God has brought you here for such a time is this, and we are blessed beyond measure by your wisdom and by your loving presence with us. I've been personally struck by the many ways this past Lent was filled with surprises and unanticipated graces. For in spite of destruction, Easter kept intruding into Lent as rays of resurrection light shone through the darkness. Like love letters from God, there were charred hymnal pages floating around the wreckage, 
with words proclaiming a message of a Christ whose glory fills the skies and whose resurrection turns our despair into blazing joy. There are pieces of shattered stained glass that sparkled with the light of the sun. There are beautiful vestments that somehow survived, including this one-of-a-kind, multicolored, petty point stole that my mom made for me over 20 years ago in honor of my ordination to the priesthood. I'd written it off as lost. And when we, it was discovered by some of the ladies of our church, uh, it was a little beat up. And it really smelled horribly of smoke, and now it's all cleaned up as good as new. It's amazing. It's a resurrection stole. It's a sign of God's enduring love for all of us here at St. Luke's. There was also the outpouring of love and support from beyond our Episcopal circles. I can't tell you how many beautiful cards and handwritten notes I have received, especially from the members of the Grace Notes Ministry at First United Methodist Church. Their messages have been so loving and caring and filled with reassurances of continuing prayer and encouragement to stay the course. One of them wrote, I cannot imagine how distressing it must have been to watch the fire blaze at St. Luke's. I know that you know that God is walking with you this season, but I am too. Sending prayers for your strength. I have no idea who this person is, if I've ever met them, or any of the other persons who've wrote those other cards. And it really doesn't matter. Because the most important thing is we're all brothers and sisters in Christ who support one another. Then just a few days ago, members of St. Matthew's Episcopal Church in Homa drove up here to deliver a beautiful Cypress altar for us to use in Witter Hall until we build a new church. As many of y'all know, St. Matthew's Church and School burned back in 2010. The altar they brought to us was built to tie them over through their time of exile. And now, they brought it to help us through our time of exile. What a wonderful outward and visible sign of love and support and a powerful witness to the truth that we really are one church. But there's more. In response to not having a Monday Thursday altar of repose, to hold a prayerful all-night vigil with our Lord during his time of agony in the Garden of Gethsemane, some of our church ladies conspired Now, I know that comes as a shock to think that any of our church ladies would ever conspire, but they did, and they put together a floral arrangement outside of the gym for folks to see as they were coming to the service and leaving. It's still actually out there if you haven't seen it, and it was amazing, not only before the service, but in the darkness with the way it was lit up. It was absolutely one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen, truly wonderful I could go on and on with the many ways that the light of God's love has continued to shine. They're all wonderful reminders that in spite of what happened on February 17th, there have been so many things and so many people to celebrate and to give thanks for. Which brings us to today, the day on which we celebrate and give thanks for the biggest and most wonderful surprise of all. That even though he was crucified, died, and was buried, Jesus Christ has overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. It's really true. The loss, the grief, the despair of Good Friday has given way to the joys and the new life of Easter. There's nothing left to fear. For the love of God in Jesus Christ has triumphed over the powers of sin evil, and death. But that's precisely why Mark's account of the resurrection may seem a little odd. Unlike the other gospel writers who share stories of the risen Jesus interacting with his disciples, calming their fears, and filling their hearts with joy, Mark's gospel ends with the three women fleeing in fear from the empty tomb. That's how the Easter story ends? Seriously? 
Who would want to say hallelujah in response to that? We may never know. But it's possible that Mark wrote more and that the rest of his ending somehow got lost. In many Bibles, there are two alternative endings of Mark included after the gospel reading we heard this morning. But most scholars believe those are later editions and not original to Mark. And quite frankly, those editions come across as a bit contrived, as though someone was so disappointed at such a stark ending, they just had to correct it. So we're left in today's gospel reading with the three women saying nothing to anyone about the empty tomb, for they were afraid. Doesn't sound very eastery, does it? And that's true. It doesn't sound very eastery, but maybe, just maybe, there's more going on here than initially meets the eye. For in the surprising providence of the God who can create something out of nothing and bring life out of death. There's actually a message of hope and encouragement addressed to all of us who love the Lord and who love St. Luke's in the way that Mark ends his gospel. I'm struck by the way Anglican Bishop N.T. Wright puts it. He says, there is a blank at the end of the story and we are invited to fill it. There's a blank at the end of the story and we are invited to fill it. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, Mark's gospel invites us to fill in the blanks, to begin writing the next chapters of the resurrection story right here at St. Luke's Episcopal Church and School. I mean, we quite literally have a blank space at 8833 Goodwood Boulevard. On first encounter, that empty space is sad to behold because it reminds us of how much we've lost. And yet, at the very same time, that empty space that's just waiting to be filled is also hauntingly beautiful. Its very emptiness speaks of the promise of new life and new possibilities. And it beckons us toward a future in which, with God's help, we will celebrate the dedication and consecration of a new church building, a new fellowship hall, and a renewed and even stronger commitment to our mission and our ministries. My friends, the empty tomb of Jesus is just the beginning of the resurrection story. There are many new chapters yet to be written, and working together, all of us, are going to write those chapters here at St. Luke's. We don't know what twists and turns the resurrection story may take here at St. Luke's. We cannot anticipate all of the ways that the plot will unfold. Nor do we know how long it will be before we conclude the chapter on construction and we begin the chapter on moving into new sacred space. But we do know that the same Jesus who rose from the dead on that first Easter Sunday will walk with us every step of the way. He will lead us. He will guide us. He will calm our anxieties and fears. When we need it, he will carry us. He will give us the patience, the grace, and the strength to persevere to the end. And so, taking one step at a time on this journey we've only just begun, we can say daily in the words of the psalmist, on this day the Lord has acted, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Together, let us affirm the faith of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for the Holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for those in need of healing in body, mind, or spirit, including Melissa and family, Marguerite, Patty, Sarah, Randy, Barbara, Donnie, Tom, William, Kay, Tracy, Anita, Leo, Wilma, Mary, Claire, Suzette, Wyatt, Bob, Edward, Reese, Brent, Grace, Doby, Carla, Lindsay, Gregory, Marty, Isaac, Casey, Tom, Janet, Gwenda, Herschel, Marsha, Kristen, Ronald, and Dan. We pray for our neighbors at the Baton Rouge Police Department, for all law enforcement officers, firefighters, emergency responders, and medical workers who serve our community. We pray for peace and justice in Israel and throughout the Middle East. We give thanks for the teachers, staff, students, and families of St. Luke's Episcopal School. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give us the peace and union of that holy city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Please be seated. Happy Easter. Thank you all for coming out for worship today. This is truly wonderful to begin the great 50 days of Easter with all of you this morning. Uh, a number of things to note by way of announcements. Uh, food and fellowship. The, the fast is over and the feast has begun, which I know is really hard for folks in South Louisiana. Uh, but seriously, stay with us afterwards uh, as we celebrate Easter, we celebrate our life together in Christ. Um, I want to call on uh, Miss Sarah Bolt, our family ministry coordinator, who is going to give us some instruction on the Easter egg hunt. Good morning. Uh, this early this morning, I met with the Easter Bunny to show him the new place to hide eggs. Um, our zero to two year olds, our little teeny tiny babies, will be out these doors to the side. And then our three year olds to kindergarten will be directly outside these doors. There's a gate that's open with a big sign that says three year olds to kindergarten. And then the gate that you came in through will be our first through fifth graders. And then also, middle school and high school, teenagers, you also get an Easter egg hunt. There are a total of 10 eggs in the carpool circle with numbers that say 1 through 10. Find them all, come to me, I will pick a number, and you will get a really fun prize. And no, I do not remember which number goes with which egg, so don't try. Um, also, very important, um, we will have parents stationed at each, at a parent stationed at each one of these gates. I will give a countdown, um, th and I will say three, two, one, go. So we're not going to go hunt immediately after this. You've got to wait at the gate very patiently for the three, two, one, go, and then you'll be able to go. And I think that is it for me. So. Thank you, Sarah. All right, well, we are working on getting power back on the uh, other side of campus. Um, people keep asking me, when, it, you know, when is that going to happen? And I have to say, well, I don't know. Call Lacey Howe. Um, but I think we're really, really close. Uh, and depending on the timing of it uh, and making the transition, working with Alter Guild, just we will let folks know what the plans are, but continue to monitor this via the church website and the weekly evangelist on Fridays will have more updates. Um, we're also going to be working on a way to solicit some feedback from folks about your hopes and your dreams uh, for what new buildings may look like, and we're going to form a group that will be answerable to the vestry uh, uh, that will work on that, so that information will be coming uh, pretty soon as well. Very appreciative of everyone who, in addition to your regular offerings and pledges, has made a contribution to the St. Luke's Fire Fund. Uh, you can get information about how to do that at stlukesbr.org. There's a link at the top of the homepage, or you can just write a check to St. Luke's and earmark it for Fire Fund. Uh, there will be many, many opportunities as we make our way uh, through this journey uh, for folks to give, not only financially, but in other ways as well. And I do really appreciate your faithfulness uh, during this time as we walk this journey together. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks, for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light, inaccessible from before time and forever, fountain of life and source of all goodness. You made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you, to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise, joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift, for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. 
We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord, our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal in unity, guard us in faith, guard its faith, and persevere and preserve it in peace. Remember all who minister in your church. Remember all your people who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with Saint Luke the Evangelist, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
And now we will dismiss our licensed Eucharistic visitor. Please turn to page 16. And let us say together, in the name of this congregation, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many share one bread, one cup, because we are one body in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. And the the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen.